David, Eric, how are you guys? How are you guys doing today? Awesome. Hey, Aaron. Pleasure to connect. Yeah, of course. Welcome to Benzinga Alt Invent. Before we get going, I gotta say, so one of my best friends is the punter for the Detroit Lions. He'd love the name of your company. <laughs> nice. He, he he probably wishes he could kick it a little bit further every time he he goes out there. He should he should check us out. There's a lot of opportunities for football players. I'll tell him. I'll tell him to check out Kick Further. He'll, like I said, he'll like the name. Um. Well, before why, before uh. Or I'll send him this video. Why don't you give, a, give us a brief introduction of Kick Further, what it is you guys do, and I'll send him that clip. Cool. I will uh, – I'll get started, but I think Eric is having sound issues. I, thought, I think you were trying no, to – No, I think the result. Oh, you're good. Okay, cool. Um, well, thanks for having us, guys. Um, we are Kick Further. Um, Eric is a co-founder. I am VP of Sales, and uh, we want to tell you today about the consignment software. Uh, consignment opportunities that we host on our platform. We've been doing this for eight years. And um, essentially, the, the platform is a marketplace where businesses and participants or buyers, as we call them, come together. And the businesses are generally small to medium size. They're all CPG. So think of any physical goods that you can buy on Amazon, at Costco, Target, Walmart, Whole Foods, um, across pretty much every product category. If you can hold it in your hand, put it on a shelf, the businesses that are producing and then selling those goods, they have to put out a lot of cash to be able to run, operate, and scale their business. And there's this gap in cash that occurs when a business needs to pay their factory or raw materials suppliers that they're purchasing from and then assembling finished goods until that that inventory is created, it's shipped to a warehouse and then shipped to customers and then potentially paid for on payment terms, um, which could be 30, 60, 90 days, right? So you could, you could have a gap of up to 10 months from when you have to put out cash to a manufacturer until that cash comes back in in the form of revenue, okay? So that is the problem that we are solving for these business owners. Now, the people that get to participate in these deals and profit as the business sells are the kick further users or backers and that's the audience that we're talking to today yeah i mean it seems like you guys are really putting the alternative and alternative investments you know we talk to a lot of people that are, are doing like real estate farmland and stuff but getting access to an investment like this is truly delving into the to the world of alternative investments uh kevin i'm gonna go ahead and toss the next question up to you um <clears throat> yeah so I, what I'm really curious about, you know, I spent some time you know, looking around on your site, and I, I think I know the answer to this, but, you know, how how is this investment structured? You know, are these like securities or, you know, you talked about consignment, you know, can you kind of explain that, like how this, you know, how this is actually structured? Yep. So every deal we do is operated under a consignment agreement. And what that means is kick further is purchasing inventory on behalf of the participants that are putting up the money for that inventory. Okay, so we're buying the inventory for the business. The business needs to produce 10,000 water bottles. They're $10 a piece. We collect $100,000 and we buy that order of water bottles. Okay, now the business produces that inventory um, and then sells it on behalf of Kick Further under consignment. Okay. As they're selling through it, they're collecting proceeds. That triggers the consignment, and then they essentially buy it back from us, plus a consignment profit, which then goes to the participants in the deal. So it, it sounds to me like, you know, I, I'm not I'm not trying to say this is like a risk-free investment by any means, you know, but it sounds like you're you are eliminating like certain risk factors. I mean, you're not just giving them money and then hoping they pay you back, like. Absolutely. I mean, having a... we, we do a lot to control for risk. One of, one of those things is we ensure that the inventory that is being consigned is actually produced. So we do a lot of verification on the front end to make sure that the suppliers are producing the inventory that's, that's getting paid for, that they're going to ship it by the expected ship date, and uh, that the money that we're spending actually correlates with the dollar amount that it costs to produce a unit. And then... Uh, you know, we'll follow that inventory all the way through sale. And 
the business will pay back based on contractually, they're obligated to pay, pay back based on the actual sales occurring. And then they have a buffer built in for any payment terms that they may have with, with any wholesale buyers. A lot of businesses that use us are operating a multi-channel sales strategy. So they have some e-com, maybe some Amazon, maybe some orders from a variety of different wholesale buyers, let's say Target, Am uh, sorry, sorry, Target Walmart, Whole Foods, right? But when they go to buy inventory, they don't want to buy for each channel individually, right? They want to get those bulk order discounts. They want to minimize freight. So they want to place all their orders at once. And they'll do that, you know, sometimes once a year, up to 10, 12 times a year. It really depends. Some businesses, depending on the product category, are going to be manufacturing more frequently. Let's say food. They're usually manufacturing every month or two. And those types of businesses are going to do more frequent deals with us. But the, the goal is here for us is to build a partnership with these businesses where they're sort of eliminating the cash needs for inventory from their balance sheet altogether. They're using kick further to fund the inventory and they're using their cash for other growth, growth needs. So they'll come to us every time they have a production run and uh, do a kick further deal. And we call those deals co-ops, consignment opportunities. And every time one of those deals goes up, the users or participants on the platform will get a notification and say, hey, X company that has you know, already done three or four deals with Kickfurther is back for another one. We're placing another order and we'd love your support. And you have the opportunity to buy in again. Yeah, Kevin, I'm, I'm glad you asked. Or sorry, Eric, did uh, you want to hop in there? No. Okay. Uh, I was going to say, Kevin, I'm glad you asked about the kind of, you know, seems like almost risk free because I was on the, the kick further site and saw this 90, 99.5% funding success. So that type of success rate just gets someone like me excited because my, my personal trade success rate is nowhere near that. So I, I get really excited when I see something like that. So I was also curious kind of how uh, you get so essentially not going to say risk free, but as close to that as possible. I'll let Eric, Eric jump in here. Yeah, so the funding success rate is actually being advertised to businesses. Okay. And so that's actually their likelihood of securing funds should they successfully pass the vetting process. And what we're really trying to tell them is this is not a Kickstarter situation, which did inspire our name that you, uh, you mentioned uh, many years ago, where you just throw something up there and you have to market it yourself. You have to find your own funders. We have a community of funders that stick with Kick Further because they like the deal flow that we put in front of them. They like the opportunities. And so we want the business owner to know if they put in the effort and they meet the qualifications and they're willing to pay the right price that they're going to get funded. Got it. That makes it that makes a lot of sense. Um, so as far as like, you know, a lot has been made about the current market conditions, rising interest rates. Have you guys seen anything uh, like that affect the, the business or has it just been, you know, business as usual? This, I think, is one of the advantages of being a marketplace is that it makes us really dynamic. We have our own vetting process about what we allow on the platform and what sort of pressures we put on pricing. But ultimately the individual funders would be the people who decide how much to put in and to which deals. So we actually have functionality where you can set the sort of criteria you're looking for for your deal and you can fund at that rates. And what we see is that when conditions change, people demand higher rates from the businesses uh, because they sense that the risk is elevated. So an example of that that I would provide is, uh, you know, when COVID uh, first sort of broke out and there was a whole series of lockdowns, a number of providers of financing sort of closed their doors um, and were no longer able to provide financing. And we actually got an influx of businesses. Uh, and what happened is the deal sizes got smaller to reduce risk and the rates got higher. And that means that people were able to continue to participate, continue to deploy capital, and continue to earn returns during this period. And as it turned out, it ended up being a banner year for Kick Further investors because uh, you know the physical goods space and e-commerce in particular had a, had a great uh, a great go. So there's different portions of the retail market that are going to be successful in different economic environments, and the marketplace is set to sort of adjust based on those conditions. You know, one of the things I thought of, you know, as soon as um, you know, I learned about your company is, you know, I watch a lot of Shark Tank um, in at least one company in every episode. That's what they're talking about. You know, the sharks ask, you know, what do you need this money for? And so, well, we have all these we need to fund purchase orders. You know, we have all these orders coming in from this store online or whatever. And 
we can't fund it. So, you know, to me, you know, if that's the thing, you know, coming to, you know, to kick further, you know, with the type of terms that you guys are offering makes you know, a lot more sense and giving up a bunch of equity in your company just to fund today. And then you still have to worry about tomorrow. Um, but what I'm, I'm wondering, you know, what's the, again, what does the typical company look like that's, you know, coming to you? Are these mostly, you know, younger companies that are, you know, maybe having cash flow issues or is this a type of thing that I guess essentially, you know, even very well established, you know, companies could still benefit from by, you know, maybe freeing up some other, their current cash to take care of this. Um, but I guess, yeah, it's overall, you know, what is the, I guess the typical company look like? It's funny you mentioned that uh, about Shark Tank because we, we serve a number of Shark Tank companies, you know, that it, even, even the activity of being on Shark Tank is such a publicity boost that it drives sales enough to cause a cash pinch. And so, um, you know, just to give you an idea of the stage and size of the businesses that we're working with, primarily their earlier stage in maybe the first five years of their business, but we do plenty of business with companies that are, you know, five to 20 years old. And there's really a number of events that could trigger a need for capital. Um, the ones that we're really focused on are the growth events. So that is opening up a new sales channel, adding a new product category, any, any sort of change that's going to cause a need to buy more inventory where there isn't an additional revenue stream being created to support that in advance of it. Right. So if they, if they all of a sudden sign a deal with Walmart and Walmart says, I want to put you in 500 stores as a test and next is 10,000 stores. What do you do? Right. Uh, overnight, you have to produce twice as much inventory as you've ever produced in the past. You don't want to walk away from that opportunity, but when you go to your bank, they say, well, your credit line is what it is. Maybe we can add 10% to it, but we're certainly not going to double it. And when they come to kick further, we evaluate the health of their business and we look at the opportunities to sell and, and we look at the uh, history of production and we say, why don't we give you the funding to produce this order that's going to support these sales that you have coming in? Okay. What are the... Um... You know, what's what's the process like, you know, for investors? You know, I'm sure somebody watching this right now, I mean, probably a number of people, you know, think this sounds pretty interesting. You know, so they, you know, they come to kick further, um, you know, they're looking at, you know, using this as an investment vehicle. You know, what, what does that process look like? Sure. Um, so one of the things about kick further is that because of our, our legal contract, uh, consignment contract, uh, any U.S. resident over the age of 18 is able to come sign up on the website and immediately start to participate. They can contribute funds by uh, bank deposit or they can purchase kick further credit with a credit card for a fee. Um, and we do have a community of people who do that pretty actively. Uh, so kind of on both sides. And then what they're doing is they're either evaluating deals individually by looking at each deal, looking at the terms associated with the certain data that we provide, like the credit score of the business signer, the revenue category of the business, years in business category, that sort of information, as well as a bunch of more subjective information provided by the business, describing what they're gonna use the money for, what their inventory is, what their business is like. Um, or you can use that new feature that I was speaking about previously, where you get to set a series of criteria and you can uh, earn allocations, which are sort of like a reservation on deals that meet your criteria based on money you've put in the platform and other sorts of things that we like when you do. Um, and then you can kind of sort of auto participate on that basis. Um, what's crazy is you can buy anywhere from like a, just over $20 worth of inventory to hundreds of thousands of dollars. So we've got people who are, you know, 100x other users on the platform and they're both able to participate side by side at the uh, sort of basis that makes sense for them. Um, and then honestly, one of the real advantages or what differentiations of kick further is that the cash starts coming back quickly, right? So these deals are scheduled for one to 10 months. Um, you know, they can go longer if things go awry, but for the most part, you're getting payouts within uh, one to three months that are cash flow <sighs> your account. You can then reinvest those into other consignment opportunities uh, that you want to fund on the site. So you kind of uh, 
that time value of money really works there. And, you know, you're not locked up for a long period of time. You're, you're liquid. There's no fees to participate and there's no fees to withdraw money. So as of now, uh, unless you want to use certain special features, it's completely fee free for the users. Um, what we see is that people tend to come on the platform. They're a little disoriented because the language is unfamiliar for a variety of reasons. And, and we recognize that we try to provide people materials and they get a sense for what's going on. They, they try it out. And then once they have a good experience, they sort of uh, double down. So we, you know, had a user who was referred by a blog that sort of focused on people who are maximizing their credit card benefits. He was referred a few years ago. He didn't actually activate at that time. Some of our marketing email recently activated that user. They purchased kick further credit. And uh, since June of this year, they've made 183 claims, so $400,000 of claims, and uh, have a few hundred thousand dollars of credit rate waiting to deploy. So what we find is that the people who like it, like it a lot, um, because it provides sort of regular cash flow to returns. Um, you're not investing in equity, so you're not really betting on the long-term viability of the business. It's not a venture model, right? You're really looking for a large success rate. You're looking to spread it across a wide variety of retail sectors. Um, and it's pretty fun because you actually have direct communication with the business. So you get updates from them. You can ask them questions. You actually see which products they're releasing. So you kind of get the access that maybe an equity investor would get with a sort of hands-off approach. That, that is a really cool, uh, yeah, kind of approach, like being able to have, like you said, that direct connection to the business, feeling like you're invested directly in the business, being directly invested in the business, but without you know, having like being tied to that equity, just having, you know, essentially um, having uh, equity in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the returns uh, from the inventory. I think that, uh, like I said at the top, like this is truly an alternative investment and something that I, I find personally interested. And uh, who knows, maybe my friend who's, who's a football player who like the name will be interested in as well. We're looking for that sponsor. We yeah. can't get Lionel Messi. We're going to look for your friend. Yeah, no, no problem. Um, yeah, any soccer players, football players, I'm sure they would all uh, love that. So last question, because we're running out of time here. Where do you see just kind of going forward? What are some, uh, you know, exciting developments that you see happening at Kick Further? What are you guys, uh, you know, real amped up about? I can start, and I'm sure Eric has some to add. You know, our, our objective is to develop this marketplace into something that's not – just supporting the the smaller tail of the market you know there's every size business that is producing consumer goods needs inventory to grow and they and when they're growing they need more capital to pay for that inventory so you know the bigger businesses they're maybe lower lower risk and would yield lower returns but those businesses should be able to access funding on kick further and those financial institutions or funds that are are funding them today can participate in those deals on kick further. So maybe, you know, a bigger business goes to their funder and they say, Hey, you know, we're looking for 10 million. And the funder says we put in one and then they could say, no problem. Find us on kick further and put in your 1 million to that deal there. Right. So, um, you know, it, we, in order to get to that stage, we got to continue inching up the marketplace on both sides um, at a, at a similar pace. And so it'll take some time to get there, but we're, we're already seeing, you know, big moves in that direction over the last couple of years are the average revenue of the companies that we're working with has increased substantially. Um, so it's exciting to be moving in that direction. We also plan on um, opening up some uh, related products that the, the same user base will have the ability to participate um, potentially in the AR or PO space. Um, so it's sort of, uh, you know, what, what you have heard of traditionally as inventory financing, there's, a, there's uh, invoice factoring or AR factoring, there's PO financing, right? But when you combine that with the offering that we have today, that's allowing people to purchase inventory when they need to pay their factories and not when their products are actually delivered to their customers or they receive orders is a game changer. And when you combine those two aspects together, you have like an all encompassing solution that can be funded on the same marketplace. So that's the direction that we're heading. Um, and Eric as head of product is developing, you know, a lot of the support and technology that we're gonna have running those uh, new ventures that we're working on today. So maybe you have um, something to add there, Eric. I'm really excited about the 
the account receivables product line because it's something it's just generally more secured right these are this is generally inventory that's already been delivered to a highly qualified customer and the the client has a bill and you get to finance a portion of that bill so that'd be an entirely separate uh sort of product but but it's the same inventory it's the same physical thing that's being delivered and then being converted into a receivable. So we're, we're able to kind of uh, double dip in that regard in a positive way, hopefully. What I'm really excited about, and this is sort of <laughs> something I deal with constantly uh, when my uh, CEO is looking to put together investor decks, but our focus over the last two years has been under the hood. So fundamentally, we are selling dollars to businesses. And in order to you know make this capital available to businesses on our marketplace, we depend on our users. So even though we're not the ones putting up the cash, we are not going to be successful unless we have a sort of broad supply of user dollars of people who are looking for different risk levels and different companies to participate in. So a lot of what we've been doing is investing in a data infrastructure to in improve our returns and to improve the performance of the platform. So not only are the companies getting larger in terms of revenue, but they're getting more qualified on a financial basis. So we're, we're trying to really curate what we put on the platform. And then on the flip side of that is we're trying to release more data. In the past, we had issues with processing data in a consistent way because we deal with businesses in so many different sectors, selling through all these different sort of sales channels and uh, different industries. So we weren't able to properly productize the data and give it to the funders in the way we'd like to. So I talked about those criteria that uh, people would be able to use in order to select with their funding. We're going to give them a lot more information about the business they can use to set those criteria and hopefully develop their own strategy on Kick Further. Got it. Well, we are running a little bit over time here. It is a uh, it is twelve oh nine, a couple minutes over. But uh, Eric, uh, David, thank you guys for hopping on the show today. Real quick, because I did see a question from the chat that I wanted to get to. If we can get this answered in like thirty seconds, because we do got to run. Um, let me. Oh, Graham said any kind of return guidance Kick Further can offer. Yeah. So we're. We're generally targeting uh, 10 to 25% IRR by vintage, which we look at on a quarterly basis. Beautiful. All right, guys. Uh, well, David, Eric, again from kickfurther.com, we'll go ahead and drop that link in the chat. Thank you guys for joining us today. It's been a pleasure talking to you guys, learning more about the platform. Excited uh, to check it out further. Thanks, Aaron. Thanks, Ke Kevin. It's been great chatting with you guys. Thank you both. Likewise. Thank you, guys.